Hey what is up everyone, I'm Gunnix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a working light switch in Godot. So here I have an example scene and I've currently got a, a light bulb here. Well, it doesn't look like a light bulb, but you know, just imagine that it is a light bulb. So basically what it is, is it's just a emissive white cube with an omni light attached to it. So I will show you guys the scene for the light bulb that I made. So yeah, as you can see, it's just a, a cube mesh with an omni light 3D attached to it. So yeah. But anyways, um, how about now we actually get to making a light switch so then we can actually turn this light on and off. So if you guys do enjoy this tutorial or you do learn something from it, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So first off we're going to make a new scene, it's going to be a 3D scene, we're just going to call it light switch. And then we're going to add in a mesh. So basically right now what I'm doing is I'm just making a basic light switch. So the base of the light switch is going to be a box mesh. Something like that seems alright. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like control D. So I'm going to press control D on this mesh instance here. And basically now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to basically make the on and off switches. So um, I just noticed as well, um, uh, there's better lighting on this side. So I'll do it on this side so I can actually better see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to scale this down so then it's like a switch. Alrighty, there we go. So there is the light switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename this to off because this is going to be the off switch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. And then we're just going to rotate it and then move it down a bit. Since so in the same position as before. Hold on. There we go. And then this here will be our on switch. So basically when the player interacts with the light switch, what will happen? is it will flick between these off and on switches. So if the light switch is off, then uh, you know the off switch will be shown, and if, if the light switch is on, then the on switch will be shown. Also be sure to make sure that you do save your scenes as well as you do work on your game. So just press Control S and then we can save our light switch into a folder. I like to save my stuff into a scenes folder. There we go. Also, just so we can tell the difference between the uh, light switches and the actual base of the light switch, I'm just going to add a material to uh, this quickly. And then I'm just going to make it a different color. And boom, there we go. Now we can actually see a difference between the switches and the base of the switch. Alright, so what else you want to do is you want to add a static body 3D to your light. So we'll go static body 3D. And then what you want to do is you then want to right click on your static body 3D, go add child node. Collision Shape 3D, and the reason as to why we're doing this is because our light switch will need a, uh, it will need collision of course. Also I just realized that I had a uh, view gizmos turned off, there we go, now I can actually see my collision shape. Alrighty, so there is my collision for the light switch. And I do recommend that you do give your static body 3D a name like light switch or something along them lines. Just so then you uh, know what to refer to it as in your script. Because we will be making reference to this static body 3D in our script we'll be using to interact with it. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, get to doing the scripting of the light switch. So make sure you have your parent node selected in your light switch scene. Then in the inspector menu where it says script empty, click here where it says empty, go new script. And then I'm just going to save my uh, script into a scripts folder I made. And then we're going to go create. And boom, so now we have our light switch script. So we're going to start off by doing a few variables. So we're going to go at export var light. And the type of this variable will be a node 3D. 
So what the reason as to why we're doing um, an exported variable is so then we can actually assign uh, whatever light we want to the light switch. So let's say for example you have like multiple light switches in your scene, right? And you want to have each light connected up to a certain light switch. So this variable here just allows us to change whatever light we want to be used by a particular light switch. So yeah. And then we're going to go at export var on and this will equal to false at first. So what this is, is this is just a variable which will determine if our light is on or off. So if you want your light to start as on when your scene starts, just make sure that you have on ticked. If you want it to be off when your scene starts, just have it off. And uh, yeah. And then next up, we're gonna do a variable for the on material of our light. So this will be a standard material 3D. So basically what the on mat is, is this will be the material that gets added to the mesh of our light bulb when our light is on. So if we go over to our light bulb here, right, here in our light bulb scene, as you can see with the mesh, it has a material assigned to it. And this material is an emissive white material. So this is our on material for when our light is on. And then whenever our light turns off, so whenever we use the light switch and our light turns off, that's when the off mat will be used. So we have our on material and our off material, and yes, mat is short for material. So we can create uh, two new materials to use as the off and on materials for our light. And as I just said, depending on if the light is on or off, then these materials will be assigned to the light bulb. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is we are now going to get to doing the function for the light switch. So first off, we're going to do a ready function. And the reason as to why we're going to be doing a ready function is so then we can apply, uh, you know, the certain properties that we want to when our scene starts. So what we're going to start off by doing is we want to first off grab our off switch here. And uh, we want to change the visibility of it depending on if our light switch is going to be on or off at the start of the scene. We're going to be doing the same thing with the on switch as well. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to go dollar sign off. So the reason as to why we use dollar sign is so then we can directly access the child of the node that our script is attached to. So we use a dollar sign off to grab our off switch. And then we go dot visible, so we're going to be uh, affecting the visibility of the off switch. And what this will equal to is to the opposite of on. So if you don't know what an exclamation mark is used for in programming, it's basically used to mean not in a lot of scripting. So when you have exclamation mark on, that means not. So what we're doing here is we are setting the visibility of the off switch depending on what the opposite of on equals to. So off.visible equals to not on. So it equals to the opposite of what on equals to. So if the light switch is on, then that means that off, the off switch, will be false. But if the light switch isn't on, so if the on variable equals to false, then the off switch will equal to true. And then with the on switch, so we're going to go dollar sign on dot visible. Uh, what this will equal to is whatever on equals to. So if on equals to true, so will the uh, on switch. And if on equals to false, so will the on switch. So the on switch just equals to whatever on equals to. And the off switch will equal to the opposite of whatever on equals to. So hopefully that makes sense. And then down here, what we'll be doing is light dot get underscore node. So what we're doing is we are getting the node, uh, we are getting the child node of our light object that our light switch will be affecting. And what we want to get here is the name of our OmniLight 3D. So in my light bulb scene, for example, my light, my OmniLight 3D is just simply called light. So I'm just going to enter in light here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to set the visibility of the light depending on what on equals to. And now what we need to do is we now need to just change up the mesh, uh, the mesh material of our light. So what we're going to do is we're going to go light dot get underscore node. 
and uh, you want to get whatever the name of your light bulb's mesh is. So for me, it's just simply called mesh. We're going to go get node mesh. And then what we're going to do here, oh wait, something else which I forgot to do as well, is um, just underneath uh, this line here, you want to write uh, if on. So basically, uh, we're checking if, uh, you know, the light switch is on. So light.getsnode, and we're getting the mesh of our light switch. And then we're going to set the material override of it. And we're going to set that to on mat. So that will equal to the on material. And then you just want to copy this line here, paste it underneath. And then instead of if on, we do if not on. Then the material override will equal to the off material. And boom! So that is going to be our ready function. So basically we're just applying some properties and stuff there that need to be set at the start of the scene, depending on what you have your uh, on variable set to. So now what we're gonna do is we're now going to create a new function. So I'm gonna go func and we're gonna call this toggle light. So this will be the function that happens when our player interacts with the light switch. So we're gonna go on equals to the opposite of on. So what we're doing here is if the player interacts with the light switch, uh, the toggle light function will happen. And uh, when the player does interact with it, on will equal to the opposite of what on currently equals to. And then that's when we can actually um, copy, this, uh, copy this bit of code here actually. We can just copy all this here. Like pretty much just all this, we can literally just copy it over. And boom. Um, so yeah, that should literally be it. So yeah, it's a very simple script, very easy to do. Of course, if there is anything that I need to add or need to change, then I will. But hopefully this does work out from the testing, so yeah. Anyways, now when you are done making your light switch, you might think to yourself, oh yay, now I can interact with the light switch, but there is still something else which we need to do, and that has to do with the player. So there is still a bit of scripting left to do, don't worry. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you go to your player scene, and of course, depending on the sort of game you're making, whether you're doing it third person or first person, uh, I'm going to be using first person ex as an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a raycast to my player's head. So I'm going to go raycast 3D. You can attach your raycast where you want to, but um, if you're doing a first person game, definitely do add it to a child of your player's head. You know, the way your camera looks around and stuff. So here I have my raycast. And uh, yeah, that should be a good enough length. So once you have your raycast added onto your player, uh, what you want to do now is, uh, with your raycast selected, scroll down to where it says script empty, create a new script, and now we just need to create a new script for our uh, player interaction. So one thing I will say as well is um, if you're someone who uh, you're currently, you've already currently got a project going and you've already got a raycast method of interaction, well that's good, you don't even need to add in a new raycast, you can use the one that, that you're currently using. All you'll need to do now, if you've already got a raycast in your scene and a script attached to your raycast, is uh, you just need to basically add in the bit of code that I show you guys what to do for the uh, light switch interaction specifically, so yeah. So I'm gonna save this into my uh, scripts folder. And here we go. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the ready function since we won't be needing that right now. And uh, I'm going to be turning this process function into a physics process function since the raycast interacts with physics, so yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do if is underscore colliding, so we're checking if the raycast is colliding. And if the raycast is colliding, we're going to go var hit, so we're creating a new variable called hit, and this will equal to get collider, so we're getting the collider of whatever the raycast 3D is hitting. And if hit.name equals to light switch, or something else which you could do as well, is you might want to do if light switch in hit.name, it doesn't really matter, both work out, but we'll do this one. So if light switch in hit.name, which basically means that if uh, if the if those specific words light switch light underscore switch, if that's found in hit.name, then what we'll do is um so basically what hit is specifically is it is this static body 3D here. 
So because our static body 3D is our form of collision on the light switch, this is what hit will be equaling to. So hit on our player interaction script, it will equal to this static body 3D specifically. So what we need to do uh, when we are checking if light switch is in hit.name, so we'll need to also um, go add a, well, you need to make sure that you've got an interaction action set up in your project. So what you'll need to do is you need to go project, project settings, and then switch over to the input map tab. And uh, if you don't already have an interact key, make sure you add one. I've already got one personally, but if you don't already have one, just add one. And then once you do add it, just click on this plus icon, press a key, and that will be what your interaction key is. So yeah, now as I said, I already have an interact key, so I won't be needing this new one I just made. So once you get that done, you just want to go if input dot is action just pressed interact. So I'm just going to call, so my action's called interact, so I'm going to put that in there. And if we do press that key, and we are looking at the light switch currently, what we'll do is we'll need to get the parent of our uh, light switch's static body 3D. So we'll go hit.getParent because the parent of our uh, light switch's static body 3D is what has the script. And once we get the parent, we can go toggle light. So make sure that you do check your function name to make sure you're getting the correct function name. So we're going to go toggle light. And boom, that should work. So now when we add our light switch into our scene, uh, hopefully when the player interacts with it now, uh, it should all work. It should all turn on and off. So let's go add in our light switch quickly. There we go. So right now it's kind of big, but we can change the size of it, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll also need to fill in the variables as well. So we're not completely done yet. We do need to still fill in a few variables. Alrighty, so there is our light switch. So I think at the start of the scene, I'm going to have it equal to on. At the start of the scene, actually, now nah, we'll, we'll have it off at the start of the scene just to make sure that it gets sets off correctly because the light's already on right now. And uh, we'll do the on material. So I'm just going to do this simple basic white material with a white emission. There we go. Boom. There's our on material. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this value, paste it over here. Then I'm going to right click here, go make unique, so then it's no longer the same as this material. And then I'm just going to turn off the emission, and boom, that is going to be the off material for the light. Again, you guys can do whatever, you know, colors and stuff you want for your on and off materials. I'm just doing basic white. And then last but not least, we need to assign our light into here. So I'm just going to grab my light bulb from the hierarchy and just drag it in. And boom, now my light has been added to the light switch. So this is the light that my light switch will be manipulating. So now let's actually go test this out and see how it all goes. Alrighty, so here we are. And as you can see, you can already tell first off that the uh, light actually did work. So, you know, it's off now. It's no longer on. And uh, let's find that that disastrous old light switch. There it is. So here's our light switch. And boom, it works. So when I flip it on and off, as you can see, it's actually changing. So our off and on switches are changing between visibility. And we also have our light turning on and off over there with the on and off materials being applied. So yeah. So anyways guys, that is pretty much the end of this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you all did learn something from it. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Also, if you're somebody who wants to add sounds to your light switch as well, I will show you guys quickly how to do it just in case. If you do want to add a sound to your light switch, so you just, uh, so you just add a child node to your light switch scene. Uh, go audio stream player 3D. And you can set the max distance on it if you want to. You can set the stream so you can have like, you know, um, you know, a, a sound playing for your light switch whenever you switch it. And I'm just going to call this to switch. <clears throat> and then whenever you do toggle your light, you can just have a switch so you can get the name of your light of your light switch sound and then dot play. And boom. So now when I flip the light switch. <laughs>
As you can hear, there is now a sound when we do flip the switch. So yeah, that there is how you add a light switch sound. I just thought I'd quickly uh, show you guys how to add a sound to it if you were interested. So yeah. But anyways, guys, that's the end of this video. See you all next time and bye-bye.